Hi, I'm Maria, and this is Oz Costumes. Today, we're going to be talking about bones. More specifically, the steel bones we use for costumes and clothing, not the ones your dog chews on. But first, if you're interested in more cosplay-related content, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell, and let me know what kind of tutorial you would like to hear next. You may be wondering, why are they called bones? And that's because in the olden days, corsets, which were called stays back then, were made from whalebone. Obviously, we don't use whalebone now, we mainly use steel. But that's why we refer to the structure of the corset as boning. Obviously, one of the main uses for boning is for corsets, which provides an understructure for certain garments. And depending on the period, you have a corset that shapes your body according to the garments of that particular era. It's kind of like an oldsy timesy bra or body shaper. But I'm not gonna be focusing too much on corsets in this video. What I'm gonna be talking about is the boning itself and how it can be applied to other garments. The main reason why you would want to include boning in a garment would be to provide structure and stability. So you would find it in strapless garments or heavily structured bodices. And in my case, most recently, I used it for the base structure for my Luna Freya cosplay, which is a pleated dress on the bias. Don't make too many harsh judgments here. It's very much a work in progress. There's several different kinds of boning. The first is flat steel which is used for straight seams and lines. I feel this kind of boning offers the best structure. Second is spiral steel, which bends and accommodates for those curved lines and curved seams. This still offers good structure, but I always use it in combination with the flat steel. The third I don't have on me because quite frankly, they are garbage, but they are the different kinds of plastic boning. But in my book, these don't exist. Please don't ever use them. I hate them with every fiber of my being. However, I understand that steel boning can be quite expensive, especially for young cosplayers. So my alternative is going to Home Depot and getting the thick plastic zip ties. Yes, this is a much better alternative than the other plastic crap. Why do I hate that plastic crap so much? because it just doesn't hold its shape, which defeats the purpose of boning. So now that we have our bones, I'm gonna be talking about how to treat the ends. Okay, so first I'm gonna be talking about how to treat the flat steel boning. Since I have it a roll, I have to cut to my specific size that I need. And usually in order to cut, I have these big heavy duty shears. You can get these at Home Depot for about like $15, it wasn't that expensive. Um, just make sure when you do get them that you get the straight cut ones. I'm, there's left-hand and right-handed ones, but these work the best for me. So basically you just boop and be careful, things will go flying. Um, I also like to round off the edges. So I cut a little bit of the corner off and then I cut a little bit of the other corner off, like so. I haven't tried it, but maybe a Dremel would round this out. But basically you want to round it out so it doesn't poke through the casing or your garment or whatever it is. Once you have your piece cut, imagine this isn't attached to the roll again because I want to save this. <laughs> you tip the ends with nail polish. Now, I know when you order individual pieces, they will have the bones already tipped off with, uh, what is it called? I don't know. They'll have it sealed off already. But I don't have access to the stuff they use, but nail polish works just as well. And I use the Insta-Dry stuff so it dries faster. And keep in mind, if you have birds, make sure you don't do this around them. My birds are in a different room now because it smells. And basically you just take a brush and you just lightly do this. You paint on like you're painting a nail and then you make sure you go off the edge too. So what you're doing is you're softening the edge and preventing it from being all pokey and stuff. Technical terms going on here. Okay. You don't need that much because you don't want it to be too goopy. And then you wait for it to dry. 
but once it dries, it's all ready to go into the bone casing. So with spiral boning, I this is my least favorite step in as far as like dealing with boning is. Uh, you take these metal tips, they look like this, tiny little things, and you basically put them on the end, but you if you just do it, leave it like that, it falls off really easily. So basically what you have to do, now I wish I had good pliers for this, but basically what you wanna do is you want to squeeze all ends of the metal tip simultaneously so it kind of closes in around the metal tip. And basically, how I do that, this is really annoying, let's see if I can do it. You close in the sides, Oops. close in the sides, hold, oh my gosh, I hate this. Oh my gosh, so once you have a good grip, then you take your other pliers. Nope, my gosh, I hate this so much. Once you have that, then you take your other pliers, you squeeze. So basically you're creating pressure from all angles. This will take several tries. See, I hate this so much. <laughs> the right tools make things easier, guys. Ah! Now, I do know that there's actually like some uh, set of pliers that has an attachment that actually is made for this and like it does it all at once and I wish I had it, but I can't find it anywhere. <laughs> My gosh. Okay guys, I think I got a good grip and I think this is it. Basically, I've been like turning around every which way, so like I've been flipping it this way, gripping it like so. I also switched hands because I'm right-handed and just, just keep, just keep doing that. Oh gosh, I hate this. So let's see. Oh, see, there we go. Boop. And when you can do that, then it's on. So now that we have our bones, let's talk about how to sew them into our garments. And I have a couple samples that I made from a class that I took a while ago, but they get the idea across. So this first method is actually my favorite method. I call it the sandwich method. Basically what it is, it's two pieces of fabric that are stitched together. You stitch on the lines first, and then you put in your bone. So it just kind of slips in like that, and you have a sandwich. So the next method is sewing a ribbon and on top of fabric and putting the bone in. You want it to go all the way to the top to the end of your seam allowance because when you stitch across on your stitching line, it sort of seals in that bone and keeps it from going places. And for this ribbon, you can use a couple things. You can use what this is, which is half inch double fold bias tape, or you can actually get bone casing. This is probably the better option because it's more stable. But again, if you are running tight on budget, then you can just do the bias tape. This is the same thing, but it is over a seam. Another method is using the seam allowance as your bone casing. But as you can see, this is my seam allowance that has been pressed open like you usually would when sewing something, except this time it has been stitched down at the edge and the bone sits right there. So to give you guys some context, let me show you a couple garments with boning in them so you're not just staring at hypothetical squares of fabric. So this is a corset I made for that one class I mentioned, and I used the sandwich method for it. So what I did is I cut out the pattern pieces and I stitched the lines where, to where I wanted the channels to be, and that's where my bones went. And also this is a good example of the combination of using the flat steel boning and the spiral boning because this is a very straight line and this is a very curved line. You can't do that with a flat steel. You can also kind of see, let me just, you can also kind of see on the back here, this is straight and this kind of curves a little bit. So I probably use spiral for this. Yes, I can feel the tip, I use spiral for this. Please excuse all the cat fur. So here's my Luna Freya dress. Don't mind this, I'm gonna fix this. I know, I know, I know. Um, 
So anyway, I'm gonna just show you what I've done underneath here. We're gonna do a little bit of surgery. So on that lining piece, I have stitched some bone casing and put some boning on the seams. So, and what this is doing, this is helping keep the dress, keep its shape on while it's on my body. So, as you can see, there's a bone there, there's a bone there, there's a bone there, and also there's a bone on the side seams, right there. And then there's also bones in the back. It's very important when you're stabilizing something to have a bone in the center front and the center back and on the sides at the very minimum. But yeah, that's, that's boning in there. Yep, there it is. Now, one very important thing I should mention before the end of this video is washing and care of garments with bones in them. Always hand wash or spot clean a corset or garment in cold water with light soap detergent. Rinse it, then lay, it, lay the garment out flat, like, oh my gosh, feather. I would lay it out flat like this, completely open, or however flat you can, the flattest you can get it. Be aware that steel is susceptible to rust, so make sure you press out as much moisture as you can with a towel, and do not, do not put it in the dryer under any circumstances. I hope you found this video useful. If you would like to see more from me, click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell if you have not done so already. Be sure to leave a like and comment down below what you would like to see next, and I will see you in the next video. Hey Shiva, Shiva, do you want a bone? Oh, wrong bone. Do you want a bone? You want a bone? A bone? Okay, you're just gonna sleep. Okay. <laughs>